Piggybacking off DC stuff, there's a new animated movie coming out, Batman TMNT, based on the comic crossovers that we got. There was one, and then there was two. I, I think that was, like, one of the early podcast things we covered. Like, I think that was something that came, like, a couple, a year or two ago. And yeah, it was the second um, of their crossovers where yeah. Bane appears. And coincidentally, this animated movie will have Bane and Rachel Ghoul, who was in the... Uh, the first time they crossed over, so I guess they're combining the stories. Yeah, well, I I mean that just seems like a bunch of elements that shouldn't mix. I I didn't end up actually reading any of the uh, Batman TMNT crossovers, so I can't really judge too much. But it, I mean, it just looks like a cash grab to me, and like just based off of my initial instinct, I'm sure it's gonna do fine. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, I. I, I'm not gonna pay to see that, you know. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely pick it up because with the animated movies, for a while they've just been doing things I don't have that much interest in. Like I think the last one they did was the Death and Return of Superman or the uh, Reign of the Superman. And right. Yeah, that looks pretty dull. Yeah, I watched the Death and Return the first part, and I don't know. A lot of people were praising it, but I just it missed so many, <sighs> so many plot. I don't know if I say plot points, but it definitely just took the whole story and just blasted through it. Like, at the very end, when they rushed through a funeral of, uh, you know, for Superman, it's like, right at the end of it, it's just, oh, he just flew out of the coffin! Oh my god, what's happening? And, and they have, like, very brief cameos from, you know, what would be Superboy and Steel and, uh, what's his name, uh, Hank Henshaw, who becomes the cyborg Superman. So, I don't know, to me, it wasn't good. So I didn't bother with the yeah, uh, of Superman. But this thing... I will look into. It, it has a funny looking aesthetic so far. We see Batman. He's in his Silver Age look. He has like the blue cape and the, the target symbol. Batgirl has a redesign and then it's Damian Wayne Robin. And then it's the, it's like, looks like 2D versions of the 2012 Ninja Turtles. The 3D animated ones. This looks like if you right. drew those, but in 2D. So it's all these weird visual styles going on. Yeah. But I think, I, I mean... think it could be decent because it's a crossover. When has that happened before? What if we had an intercompany crossover as a cartoon? That's a good question. I can't really think of any. Nor can I. Um, yeah, nothing off the top of my head, at least. I mean, uh, uh, of course, like the obvious connection, I think, is like Amalgam and uh, you know the D like the cash grabs from DC and Marvel back in the nineties. But uh, those are great. I, I think that's hardly the same thing. Yeah. Oh, actually, there um, there is another one, uh, another funny uh, cash grab crossover that I want to get when it comes out in the collected edition. Star Trek Transformers mm. is, uh, I think, coming out in May. They have, they have like the ongoing issues now. It's a five-part series. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could see that if they really wanted to dive into the whole uh, Transformers yeah. or Aliens, uh, you know, that whole storyline. Yeah, they've had Star Trek Green Lantern, um, TMNT, Ghostbusters, you name it. There's so many crossovers. Right. There's even a designated Earth in DC and Marvel where it's... Uh, a coexistence of all the characters. Like, this is apparently where the original Superman, Spider-Man crossover happened. Batman, Daredevils, uh, Spider-Man, Batman, Batman, Punisher, and Avengers Transformers. So you got <laughs> Justice Leaguing things, avenging things, and transforming things all in one place. <laughs> Neat. Neat indeed. Neat indeed.